Thank you, Clapping, for the band. Jesus. My prayer that the Legacy Conference will give each of us a deeper appreciation, a deeper love of our Savior, who died for our sins, was buried, and risen again. So I pray that John 4, when the woman came to the well to get water, when she encountered Jesus, the living water, she left a changed person. She, the passage says she left the jar, went home and told everything about this man, Jesus. It would be a shame if you left here without seeing Jesus more clearly. I pray that the teachings from the workshops, the preaching of the word, the singing praises to him would not just shake our minds and our thoughts, but would impact our hearts. That we would love the one who is worthy of our love and adoration. The second thing that would be horrible is if you went home a, a better person with a changed heart and nobody else knew about it. We have been impacted so that we could impact others. In Genesis 12, people like to talk about the blessing of Abraham. We, we, we understand that the, the blessing that Abraham received, first of all, wasn't a financial blessing. Galatians tells us it was the blessing of the gospel. But also the blessing he received was not meant for him to keep. He was called to be a blessing. Well, he was a, given a blessing to be a blessing to the nations. And so tomorrow, as we go out to the Legacy Fest, I pray that you join us. And so we proclaim his excellencies to the city of Chicago. And I pray as you go home, that you would take the notes from your workshops, that you would take what you've learned, that you would sit down with your neighbor, with your friend, with your family member, that you would walk them through what you have learned, that you would pass it on to somebody else. Watch this quick video, and then script will come up after. something to say, man. You dig? I mean, you cats been up here rapping ain't said nothing about the real thing. You know what I mean? Now, I got something to say, man. Drop the mic. Yo, man, put that mic so down. Drop the mic. Yo, man, drop the mic. Chatterbox. Like we were around death every day. Funerals day after day after day after day. That week we had a funeral. Danny Rapp in the funeral Tuesday. And by Saturday he was, by the next Tuesday he was being buried. Years after his death, Danny's murder remains unsolved. He is buried in view of the academy he founded with his parents. He walked in love and uh, it was so hard because he never smoked a cigarette, he never held a gun. He always, the Bible was his everything and I still don't understand it. I don't know if I ever will. All people tell me he's in heaven. I know if anybody's in heaven, it has to be him. But I miss him. I miss him so much. Well, You know you make me wanna Don't keep my head So 
up to my feet, a double dose of the Holy Ghost made me kick it to the beat. Some people get religious, frown and say quit it, shout it down the wall. Yo, I remember when I was uh, four years old, and it was my birthday party, and I had a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle sweater on. And on the boom box was D-Boy. Um, in the early 90s, I used to bump D-Boy as a baby. And uh, that was the type of music that was played in my home. And it's crazy that we're honoring D-Boy tonight, who many of us may not know, was one of the first Christian rap pioneers. In other words, back in his day, Christian rap wasn't even a thing. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Can someone say, wow? <laughs> so D-Boy was a young man who used his talents, and not only in his community, but it affected the world. And little did D-Boy know, the Puerto Rican from Dallas, born in New York, that he would affect this Puerto Rican in Chicago. D-Boy affected me even to this day and my music. And he was the type of rapper that when he met Toby Mac at the Dove Awards, Toby Mac was scared, shaking in his boots, because he thought D-Boy was gonna rip him up one. But guess what D-Boy did at the Dove Awards? He asked Toby Mac for his autograph. That was the type of man D-Boy was. And tonight we honor his legacy. After his second studio album, D-Boy was shot and killed at a very young age. This is his second album, he was shot and killed. But what an amazing impact and legacy he left in his life and with those two albums. So we want to honor his legacy tonight by giving him the first annual Legacy Award. And receiving this award tonight is this wonderful family who I've had the pleasure of hanging out with. And so I want to invite them up to receive this Legacy Award. Can we put our hands together? Can we stand up to our feet and pay honor, pay homage? Side of his car, but 
You know, I had the honor of picking him up the night that he finished his last album. He mastered it, and I picked him up, and I'm mad. It was 3 in the morning, and I'm like, really, Danny? And he loads those turntables, techniques, 1200, still got them. And he loads them into the trunk. And he said, if anybody ever want to hear what I have to say, said it. And so a couple things I just want to leave you with is, one, have you. He was 22 and he died, and you know, I struggled with why, you know, how, and then God told me he could. There's 80-year-olds that haven't done yet what they're supposed to do here. There's seven that are supposed to say it. The second thing I would tell you is that crawling back from that place of darkness, because the world lost D-Boy, and I lost my nerdy brother, Danny. <laughs> And um, I just didn't think there was coming back from that. But I can tell you one thing for sure. It has stripped me of living for here. Yeah. I don't live for here. I'm not disappointed because God don't owe me nothing. He did the thing. He didn't owe me anything.